Good morning, good morning, people. So I'm going to change up the format a little bit. Definitely going to still talk about Sundial. You know, I love to talk about Sundial. But I'm also going to talk some about some of the headlines that are out there and things like that. Because I feel like, you know, if we're hyper-focused on Sundial, we're, we're going to miss other opportunities as well as the market news in general has an impact on our whatever stocks we pick either way. Um, so I think it's something that's worth paying attention to. So that said, I'll, I'll give my disclaimer. As you know, I'm not a financial advisor. Um, I am an attorney, but this is not meant to be legal advice. This video is meant for just you know entertainment, education purposes only. Um, so please, uh, you know, if you're looking for financial advice, go consult a professional. Uh, if you're looking for legal advice, you know, consult an attorney that's admitted in the in the jurisdiction you're dealing with and that's competent and has experience dealing with the issues that you're dealing with. Um, that said, you know, we'll go on. Please, again, don't take anything in this video as advice. Uh, double check, do your own research. And let's get started. So I'm very proud that Sundial held 61 cents. There was definitely a lot coming out of Super Bowl weekend and Valentine's Day that, uh, you know, worried a lot of people and we saw the price drop down a few cents and I don't think it's a big deal. I think holding that 61 cents was huge for a Monday. Um, let's see what's gonna happen today. 15th, Tuesday, the, the market's gonna open pretty in a little while. Um, and I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen, but. What I'm hoping for is some uh, steady growth so that we, uh, from, like, maybe we, we hold 61 cents, maybe get as low as 59 cents. And I, I wanna see us, you know, by the end of this week, up at, you know, close to 70 cents, if not 71 or so. Um, most of my predictions have been wrong so far, except, you know, that the general long-term prediction seems to be, my theory seems to be holding. But my short-term projections have been way off. So, that said, um, you know, there's still some crazy headlines out there. And I'm, I'm not going to go into the articles or anything like that. I'm just going to, you know, read some of the, the headlines. So Investor Place is saying a week ago that Sundial Growers is a penny stock that's now worth a gamble. Yahoo Finance has reported that, you know, six days ago, about a week ago, that Sundial was granted their 180-day extension by NASDAQ. Uh, and given, given another chance to regain compliance to get up to a dollar. So they need to get up to a dollar within the next six months in order to uh, stay on the NASDAQ. So they got their extension, which we predicted. Um, didn't seem like a big leap to say that they weren't gonna get that. But definitely that, that gamble paid off if, if you were thinking that that was a gamble. Uh, then there's some, you know, more recent, like four days ago, avoid Sundial stock, Sundial growers like the plague. <laughs> they, they're, they're yelling at you uh, after it's, you know, rise to some 60 something cents. It's on you, get the hell out, get the hell out, stay away from it, stay away from it. Um, article about wire, you know, some of these marijuana stocks getting high today. So, so you know, it, some weird, weird articles out there. I, I, I saw like a few more of them. I, I didn't. I'm not going to read everything that I, I was looking at, but it gives you a, a good spread of these these last few days of news and what's going on. Um, important to stay current. But I think also, you know, just the general news. Like we know a lot is going on in Ukraine right now. And, you know, we should be following and seeing what's going on in the world as, as well as uh, 
so I'm just gonna pull some of the the top headlines. Um, so Reuters is reporting that Russia says some troops near Ukraine are returning to base. So I, I think there's this narrative line that Russia's trying to put out there that this was uh, training exercises and you know they were amassing troops on the border for training purposes and not in preparation for an invasion of Ukraine. Um, but the West is still, you know, generally worried about it, saying, well, we're not really seeing that much troops returning, so what's going on? Uh, Bitcoin news. Um, I mean, Bitcoin is, is going back up. I, I don't, you've probably seen some of my earlier videos. If not, you'll, you'll check out some of the other videos, especially the one about... Uh, Bitcoin and what you know nobody's telling you but Bitcoin goes through this cycle and it, it seemed unclear and it still it still is unclear to me whether we are still in that downtrend trying to find the bottom and whether that bottom is gonna be somewhere below 30,000 or whether we found that bottom at 31,000 or so or wherever it was um, and now we're going to be on our way to this, like, or we're in this golden period, I call it, where we're just going to, you know, have volatility, but it's just going to be a steady rise. Um, and eventually there'll be a, a huge jump, uh, there'll be a pullback, and then we'll find the peak. And then from the peak, we'll be going into this turmoil of volatility until we find another bottom. So that's, that's the cycle that it's, it's constantly been going through. There's no reason why we should believe that, you know, that's going to change. Um, but, you know, the news, everything, everything uh, affects it. Uh, TMZ is reporting that Fat Joe gets a new custom Mandarin Oriental 450K Rolls Royce. I, I saw this on his Instagram. That is a very nice car. Uh, hopefully I, I get to see him and get a get a ride in that car uh, maybe he'll let me drive it no, uh, we'll, we'll see we'll see I, I highly doubt that'll happen but you know miracles happen miracles happen big fat Joe fan um, what else is going on New York City fires 1430 unvaccinated workers following deadline and that's from Bloomberg reporting so yeah a lot of people uh, failed to comply and they, they ended up getting terminated um, I know at least one person who's a you know DOE employee and I've been trying to to get a, um, a discussion going with him and we've been working on it but he's He's a little bit more organized than I am, so he's, uh, you know, putting some real work. So I'm super excited about about that talk, um, and we're gonna be, you know, talking about the laws surrounding um, the mandates and, you know, the challenges that have been uh, levied and, and how they failed and so on. Um, so very interesting. Um, okay. I get some uh, pretty raunchy uh, <laughs> headlines in my. Uh, this is uh, what is this? Smart news. One of them is a stripper is <laughs> talking about what it's like on Valentine's Day in the strip club. I don't know. I don't know what articles I've uh, read that made that relevant to me. Uh, all right, let's go into some business news. Let's go more to. Market Watch is reporting that the Dow futures jumped more than 300 points as Russia says troops are, are heading back. So there we go again. That After we just had this Monday dip, now we're getting this, this positive news that's going to lead to more money going to the market maybe, or it seems to be happening. Um, maybe that'll lead to Sundial jumping um, today. So let, let's see what's going to happen. So I, I'm not swing trading this thing. I'm just holding long term. That, that's that's.
that's my goal. Like I said, it, I'm sticking to my, I'm not taking profits until it gets to 80 cents. Um, and even then, it's going to be a very small portion of profits that I'd, I'd be taking out of my holdings for some uh, um, Oh, The Hill is also reporting that 1,400 New York City workers were fired over the vaccine mandate. If, if you are any person that's that's been fired over that mandate, you know, please leave a comment or you know, look me up um, at not my lawyer on Instagram and, and direct message me. Uh, I would love to to hear your story and you know, talk about it. Um, I am a New York attorney. Inflation is still big on, on the news. There's people talking about uh, home prices, rents, uh, and wages. Basically, well, well, home prices and rents are going up. Wages are pretty much steadily going down. Um, so that, that's that's interesting. Um, I think they, I saw a report too that. And people are saying, hold cash right now. Like, this is a very volatile time. We don't know if uh, the markets have found a, a bottom that they're going to bounce back off of. Um, and they're, people are recommending that you hold cash. And I'm, I'm always bad at holding it. I mean, I, I hold enough cash to, to pay my bills. But as far as investments, I, if I have money in a, in, if I'm managing money in a mortgage or whatever, I have a hard time holding cash, even though I, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, I just, it, it hurts me to like have cash sitting there. It's like, come on, I want that money working for me. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's smarter to hold on to that cash. So Axios is reporting that SEC is ratcheting up the crypto crackdown, which is interesting. Uh, I'm actually going to open that one up. This was reported 22 hours ago, so Monday morning, and then Axios is basically reporting that this is the largest ever penalty against a cryptocurrency firm, and the first in which a crypto company was charged with violating the registration provisions of the Investment Company Act of 1940. So. This is BlockFi, a crypto startup that agreed to pay a hundred million to settle allegations from the SEC and state regulators that it illegally offered uh, a product violating the securities laws. Um, through its action, the SEC is setting a precedent with regard to its handling of crypto lending accounts, clarifying that it views these types of offerings as securities and will regulate them as such. So basically they just tax them 100 million, um, sending a warning shot out to all the crypto companies. So I guess it was beginning in March 2019, BlockFi began offering so-called interest accounts to the public in which investors lent company crypto assets in exchange for its promise to provide a variable monthly interest payment. BlockFi then pulled investor assets and exercised full control over how much to hold, lend, and invest. So according to the SEC, BlockFi misled investors about the level of risk they were taking on by lending out their crypto assets and that they didn't have the information they needed to make appropriate investment decisions. So this is, so I guess a lot of people are doing this now, right? They're, you know, you're staking your assets and people are offering crazy amounts of, of interest in return. Um, 
but it's like what what are they doing with that money and how 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 do you give 86 percent interest per year how how do you do 486 like these, these people are promising insane numbers you know some of them are a little bit more reasonable like it like if it's saying four nine you know even twelve percent um i can see that you know being something that that makes sense um i know like on one of the exchanges uh like algo for instance has uh they they just for holding that for a month they'll give you a, a 12 percent per year interest rate on that which i don't I don't know if that per se is a, a problem because they're not saying lend out the money, they're just saying you need to hold it. Um, but here, BlockFi was taking the money and then saying, I'm going to lend some of it out, I'm going to invest some of it, I'm going to hold some of it, uh, and so on. So, just like I said, holding on to cash is hard. Maybe they weren't holding on to as much cash as they should have, or maybe they were holding on to too much cash, or you know, who, who knows what the excuse is. Um, but that, I'm sure, is going to lead to a change in, in how companies in the U.S. are doing business, um, and it might lead to some, you know, crackdowns in other places in the world. Uh, and you know, I'm pretty sure BlockFi could probably afford that hundred million, um, and that was probably a good deal that their lawyers negotiated. So, definitely important. Consult attorneys uh, and. and Get somebody that has experience dealing with those issues because that will prove invaluable when it comes to negotiating some kind of plea deal or settlement or whatever it is because most things don't go to trial um, but having a, an attorney that has trial experience especially dealing with the issues it, it goes a long way in negotiations So, yep, the, the Russian finance ministry is also, Bitcoin News is reporting that no crypto loans and fewer trading options. Uh, as the Russian finance ministry clarifies uh, their regulatory plan. So, I'm sure everybody heard about the Russian government uh, basically accepting uh, or recognizing crypto. Um, but now they're they're limiting the, the list of tradable assets uh, that can be offered to to Russians, and they're trying to limit that to the most mature and established cryptocurrency. So they they're it's, it's kind of like some of the exchanges do themselves. Like they're not saying I'm going to list every uh, crypto on the exchange. So Russia's saying, well, we're not going to list or allow every crypto to be sold uh, in Russia because there's definitely been a few rug pulls out there I'm sure people have seen. So that definitely interesting to think about and know about. Um, I, I, some people have been following uh, XRP and their you know, troubles with government regulatory issues. Um, there's an article out by the Motley Fool. <coughs> Excuse me. XRP, why the upcoming week is extremely crucial for Ripple investors. Um, is this dated? I don't think they have a date on this article. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know why they have a date on it. They're mentioning uh, February 17th, so it's probably a recent article. Um, they're saying Ripple's refused to surrender and its claims that the XRP token is a digital asset like all other cryptocurrencies. Uh, alternatively, multiple reports suggest that a few key documents will be unsealed on February 17th, which will expose a flaw and the SEC's case against Ripple. Uh, according to protocol, Ripple's general counsel, Stuart Alderati, stated, 
Once released, these documents will show that in 2012, Ripple received a legal analysis uh, that XRP was not an investment contract. The fact that it took the SEC eight years to suggest they disagreed with that analysis while XRP traded in a massive global market is baffling. So XRP had a huge jump recently. Um, they're also reporting in there, it was in, I think from between February 6th and February 8th, it jumped uh, up 40%, but it's still down 75% from its all time highs. So that's interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm sad that I missed XRP because I, I definitely have been leaving that alone um, while this whole legal debate uh, is going on. Um, but maybe that'll change. Let's let's see what the 17th brings. That's a couple days away. Um, but yeah, so there's there's definitely some interesting news out there. Um, and let's see. Let's see how. Um, oh, let's, the market should have opened by now. Yeah, it's 9:30. Let's let's see where Sundial is going at the market. So, far. all right. So at the open, it's jumping up to 62 cents. That's a positive sign. Let's see where it goes. Let's keep Sundial on the money, people. All right. Be safe out there. Trust no one.